God of the universe, maker of the stars, who am I? Well, welcome back, everyone. Um, we had a one-week hiatus last week, as you know, some of you may have noticed. Um, and you know, some would say there would it be a good reason for that, um, <laughs> compadre. So, what is why? Why did we miss a week? What was up with that? Because Ryan wasn't feeling good. Oh, that's right. That was right. That's, right. that's the only. You can blame it. You can blame it on me. You can blame it on me. I'll take it. <laughs> but let me tell you, I have never felt so good in my life that Ryan felt so bad. <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm glad I could bring some uh, some pleasure to you there, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> after uh, after a flight to Israel last week, uh, I had I had slept a couple hours the night before, driven to Atlanta, got on a plane. I don't sleep on planes. These people that get on a plane and go, you know, I mean, I'm so envious of them, but mm. uh, I don't. And so we got in. I was at the Shell Hustle Road Hotel in Ariel, Israel. <laughs> Guys, please re- uh, excuse my voice. Uh, those that are on YouTube and watching me on uh, on video, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> but um, <laughs> it's uh, this week is it's one thirty in the morning. Thank you guys so much, by the way for scheduling the time zone, the, the time change, so that I would be seven hours away from you instead of six, and I would be <laughs> up at 1.30 in the morning instead of 12.30. You're welcome. I mean, happy to know, help. Yeah. Anything we yes. can do. <laughs> yeah, happy to help. Got you there. <laughs> well, hey, oh, I'm so... in Israel. Behind me is, uh, that looks like a wall, but it's not. It's a, sta- it's a glass window. And uh, I'm on the 10th floor of the caesar uh premier hotel yes in uh <laughs> in tiberius tiberia and so i'm sitting on the the shore of the galilee and this is our last night in the galilee as we head down to the arava desert tomorrow so uh, mm-hmm. i know you guys got some questions i'm just going to sit back and try to sip on a, a big thing of water and go we'll go for it Yes, sir. I just want to say that I'm totally not jealous of. Uh, I was going yeah. to. Yeah, not at I think all. I have to at least state the obvious there. Nope. Uh, Obeying all the commandments here, none broken at all. <laughs> 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 um, if I may, I think that the burning question I have, because this is the first time you've gone since the uh, what would how would be the best way to describe this? Uh, politically, health wise, all that stuff. How would you look at this trip now post all that stuff? What would you say? Is there any difference or is there a hunger from the, the people? That, uh, you, I think you get my question. I'd love to hear what you have to say about that. Yeah, it, I mean, it's different in, in that uh, leading tours. I've led numerous tours. Uh, this is my 31st trip to the land, which is basically 31 times of a once in a lifetime experience. Uh, it's <laughs> you know, it, it's kind of like it is in the States, anywhere else. It's that everybody's got their little story of mm-hmm. you know of survival through it. Mm-hmm. Uh, where I go and, and where where I'm involved in it with is a lot of the tourist industry, of course, in Israel. Uh, though we our, our tour is not the typical go see the holy sites, as Daniel knows. But everybody's got their their uh, their story of just how they survived through it. Uh, mm-hmm. One of them, uh, the guy that has the boat up here, Daniel Carmel, he has one of the boats. Uh, he was actually able to procure a third boat during COVID and begin to work on that. Uh, mm-hmm. They wow. were doing a, they have these reservoirs up on the, the Golan Heights, which add to the water supply. The water supply of Israel is the, is the, uh, the Galilee. Excuse me if I'm trying to figure out Hebrew or English here in the middle of it, the Kinneret, <laughs> yes. the Sea yeah. of Galilee. And so it was down, it's been down red line many times, but one time that was, it was in the red line area, and thank God it's it's way up now overflowing. Uh, they actually started desalinization uh, prior to that. And, and any, anything, all the desalinization science in the world today was begun in Israel. So many things mm-hmm. that have been given to us from Israel. Uh, yeah. But Daniel actually was working with some of the people that have the reservoirs up here, and they figured out how to do a floating solar farm. 
That's wow. crazy. Yeah. So what did he do? He went and got two boats, uh, helped with the putting those into place, and then sold the boats at the end. So you know, talk about uh, our kind of our question. We want to why uh, tie through this is when you mm-hmm. find out what you have in life, what are you going to do with it? Mm-hmm. So yeah, exactly. everybody's got a story, David. Yeah, that's awesome. I thought I was kind of curious. I imagine there's a lot of stuff, but that's really cool bringing an example like that. That's pretty mm-hmm. awesome. I think, uh, like, so that you say that you've, like, this is the uh, 31st, is that what you said? 31st time yeah. for a once in a lifetime experience? Yeah. <laughs> and I've had one experience back in 08. So, and I know that was a huge deal. That was massive. And I think that the difference between then and now is probably something similar. It's still amazing. It's still awesome, but it's, I'm, I recognize something that I didn't really know you back then. I don't think I actually knew you at all back then, but you said something the first time I heard you talk about the land of Israel, that whole concept of the land reaching out and grabbing onto your heart. And that whenever you leave there, you leave something behind. And I think you've quoted many times saying, I leave Israel so I can come, I I leave the United States so I can come see myself (laughs) because I leave a big chunk of myself in Israel. Yeah, I'm, yeah. The question I have is, have you seen that? Is Do you have a lot of first-timers with you on your tour? Have you I have seen- a lot. Uh, we have 23 people on the tour. Uh, we had five that had to cancel out for diff- different reasons right mm-hmm. at the end. One of them was a, a lady. Well, I mean, it wasn't really at the end totally, but uh, they were having a baby. She was going to be nine months, eight months pregnant. <laughs> no. Um, <laughs> we had... Uh, <laughs> yeah. We had one person that their mother, their the dementia uh, progressed mm-hmm. with them. So we, a lot of things happen. Stop, uh, right. Out of that, we have a number of, of return. We have uh, quite a few people. This is actually their third Connect to Israel tour. Uh, awesome. You know, why wow. would you do the same thing over again? Well, that's a question. Um, <laughs> and then we have this this amazing group of, of new uh, first timers. And. Daniel knows uh, a number of them because they're from the congregation, our congregation there in Franklin. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Daniel, talk about, uh, I, I want you to share the the whole thing about visiting yourself. Um, you know, there's, there's this thought about when you come here, there's a part of you, and I, you know, okay, come up with a, vi- a verse for this. Uh, I probably could after a while. Uh, you, you, you know, the whole concept of there's something here that you only have when you're here. Can you speak to that? Yeah. And, you know, I'm no matter what I say, like you said, you know, can you come up with a verse? Probably, you know, somewhere in the Bible, I'm sure you can find something. But, you know, I think one of our struggles as humans is to think that everything needs a precise explanation and a precise verse to be accompanied with it. Wow. And so, you know, just um, understanding that not everything can be perfectly articulated and perfectly described objectively. You know, some things are just a feeling. Some things are just spiritual. Um, And so, you know, you know, we've talked briefly about Israel before the land and how it really is the epicenter of where the spiritual meets the physical. You know, it is the land that you know, God spoke that this is, this is the land of promise. It's not that we can't experience God anywhere else in the earth, but you know, the majority of the scriptures take place in this little tiny piece of land. And so much of the the imagery we see is from this piece of land. It's not from America or Canada or Australia or anything like that. It's, you know, the, the scene with Jacob's ladder where the angels are ascending and descending it's in Israel. And again, not to say that the spirit doesn't spiritual doesn't interact with the physical anywhere else, but that is, it's so, you know, I'd say one of the big things to describe it is you're never going to experience more intense spiritual battles than you will in Israel because of how intense it is and how much the two interact. And, you know, if you just go with an open heart and, and realize that, you know, there's so much that happened here, you know, just, watching the Bible come to life in front of you, you know, literally on the same sea that Yeshua was on, you know, the same little piece of water that Yeshua was on. It's just, there's something that enters you that 
you just can't describe and that you can't, you can't describe it anyway. You can't capture it in a picture. You know, I wrote, a, I did a writing based on th- how you can't capture it in a picture, you know, about Israel. Yeah. Um, and so all that happens and you're just, you're just left with longing. Like you, you have so many experiences there. Some of them you understand the second it happens. Some of them you don't understand until two months later when you're back home. And, you know, all these things are just compacted inside of you and you just remember them, you think about them and you long for them. And, you know, I've been thinking a lot about it recently because I want to be there. <laughs> you know, Kate's B always says like around this time, she looks up and she sees a plane and she's like, oh, oh, Israel, you know, just thinking about going um, because we went on this tour. That's, that's when I proposed. Um, <clears throat> and so just that longing, I've been thinking about how sometimes I think we can think that that longing feeling, that unsatisfied feeling is uh, a detriment when really it's a gift. The longing is a gift because it, it reminds you that there's, there's somewhere bigger, there's somewhere, you know, where something is going to happen. And so, you know, I don't know if that answers the question, but there's just so much that happens, you know? Yeah. But see, it's about putting the, the, the longing, the yearning to action. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will, as we're posting uh, pictures on Facebook of, uh, and we've had literally hundreds of people that are following us now, <laughs> um, there will be so many people that will post that, and I'll talk to people as when I get back that will say, "Wow, I've always wanted to go." Okay, uh, mm-hmm. the, the, kind of the same as they'll tell me when I they find out I lived in Alaska, they'll say, "I've always wanted to go." Well, you know, you're 83 years old now, and you haven't, so why? Well, I, I never put action to that. There was always an excuse. Well, I, I'm waiting for this moment. I'm waiting for this person to do this. I'm waiting for, waiting for, waiting for, waiting for, waiting for. And you never accomplish anything in life because you're waiting for somebody else to give you permission to do so. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a family that uh, all of you guys have, have met this family. Daniel knows them quite well that uh, one of the girls, a uh, young lady who is an uh, amazing young lady, uh, she, and it was, it was financially, it was impossible for her to come to the land. It, it's not cheap, guys. It ain't cheap. And, uh, you know, I mean, you think, think things are expensive in the States right now? <laughs> come over here. It's tough. But she didn't, she didn't say, well, okay, here's the, Again, excuse my voice, please, um, or lack of. Uh, she didn't put down the list of why she couldn't, okay? She put down the list of why she could. And the mm-hmm. first thing that she did is she started baking challah bread and selling challah bread in Franklin, North Carolina. Okay, Not a great big Jewish uh, community there, right, Daniel? <laughs> but she started baking challah bread and putting that money aside and the father met her. Yeah. The father met her in that. And uh, money started coming to this young lady from all kinds of sources. And she's here in the land with me. She's walking the land as a, as a teenager when adults are sitting there trying to figure out, you know, well, well you know, I, I want to go, but I can't. Yeah, um, another family that we know that's a part of our our group. Um, she took all of her children, or at least the majority of them. It was at least five out of you know nine of their children by herself. You know, just just the wife, the youngest being six months old. So, you know, there's and it's not just going to Israel. It's not just anything. Like we all make excuses for everything at some point and you know at some point you just have to realize that if the father has put a desire in you he has also put in you the ability to act on it where he will meet you in it Mm -hmm. let me throw this uh and then ryan you're sitting back in the back we'll uh go to your next i guess okay Uh, (laughs) i picked up a book that i've given away too many of them so i went ahead and ordered another one uh you can get this book on eBay for about six bucks with shipping. And this is a book that we use a lot uh, on this program already. Miles Monroe, Dr. Miles Monroe, you've heard of me talk about him, Pursuit of Purpose. And uh, there's the cover for those on YouTube. 
Dr. Miles Monroe, Pursuit of Purpose. Let me read to you. Uh, I, I have a hard time with this book. I, I really have a difficult time getting through it. Uh, on the plane, I got through in 11 hours on the plane, I got through the preface. Because uh, I, I started reading it and I couldn't read anymore. I had to just sit there and, and think about it. The greatest tragedy in life is not death, but life without a reason. It is dangerous to be alive and not know why you were given life. Hmm. Okay, drop the book. You know, the, the, there's there's one we can we can just kind of deal with for a long time. But I want to take it one level further that Dr. Monroe did is the most frustrating thing in life is to be given a vision, a purpose, something to do and never act upon it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That will literally haunt you for all of your life to be given a desire and come up with excuses why it's not attainable. Mm -hmm. The Father does not give us desires to frustrate us. See, a dream, a vision, a, a is a glimpse into your purpose. And that is uh, where that comes out in that once you've been given that that glimpse into it, that glimpse is a is proof of attainability. I get that. That yeah. glimpse is proof of attainability. So whatever you've been given in life, whatever you your desires are in life, the Father gave you that to show you what you can be, where you can be. Ryan? Yes, absolutely. So um, I actually, I have some notes here because I was, uh, me being a musician, <laughs> I love uh, hymn histories. And uh, I think everybody knows uh, probably the most famous hymn in the world, Amazing Grace. Mm -hmm. And uh, so recently I was kind of looking at the history of the writing of the hymn Amazing Grace. And it came to be that John Newton, uh, he most of the time spoke to an illiterate audience. And so in order for them to remember his message, he would usually write a hymn or a song to go with it that would be sung during the service. Wow. And so the particular uh, sermon for that day that he gives is actually on essentially the five questions of life, <laughs> beginning with number one, who am I? Which I was just blown away by because he, he continues, he, he, he talks about the frame of mind uh, on down to, uh, so who am I? Where have I come to? Uh, what is what does my future hold? Uh, I guess he really goes into uh, more more four questions here. I, I won't get into all of them because we've kind of covered a lot of those uh, mm -hmm. in the past weeks. But he opens on this, and it, it was actually given New Year's morning of January, uh, well, January first, seventeen seventy three, oh. and he opens with the verse, and it's from First Chronicles seventeen. And it says, then King David went in and sat before the Lord, and he said, who am I, Lord God, and what is my family that you have brought me this far? Wow. And as if this were not enough in your sight, my God, you have spoken about the future of my house, the house of your servant. You, Lord God, have looked on me as though I were the most exalted of men. And and I where just, is that, David? Or, or Ryan, where, mm -hmm. give me a verse. This is uh, First Chronicles uh, 17, okay. verse 16. Okay, i got to look at that later. It's, and it continues on in 18. What more can uh, David say to you for honoring your servant? For you know your servant. Lord, for the sake of your servant and according to your will, you have done this great thing and made known all of these great promises. Which absolutely, wow. that that deeply spoke to me there. Um, right, I, I want to thank you for something, and that is to for uh, the for giving me the ability to not sleep the rest of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Leave uh, it to Ryan, actually. Yeah. Leave it to Ryan. <laughs> I, I'm I, I apologize. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, in the sermon, uh, Mr. Newton continues on. He says, "The Lord bestows many blessings upon His people." 
But unless he likewise gives them a thankful heart, they lose much of the comfort they might have had in them. And this is not only a blessing in itself, but an earnest of more. For when David was peacefully settled in the kingdom, he purposed to express his gratitude by building a place for the ark. So you had asked a, a question kind of at the beginning of this of what will we do with what we have been giving, mm. what we have been given. I would propose that in our goal that is set before us, we see what we can do with it for our king. Mm -hmm. So that it furthers his kingdom. Yeah. See, he had promised to build the house of David. So David wanted to build him a house. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He has, in my case, in, in my case, he has given me the ability to play music. Yeah. So I want to write songs to him and for him. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, for those in, in even a construction uh, aspect mm -hmm. or, or jobs, they wouldn't think, you know, they might say, well, I'm a garbage man. In your daily walk, you can show to mm -hmm. the world around you who God is. Uh, we uh we named our our business kingdom builds um nah, and yeah. on the back of our business card it says seek first the kingdom of god and so we don't hide from anyone you know who we are what we are it's been a great conversation starter and we pray for our clients you know yes. any 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 you know as much as we can and um you know something you said there just made me think you know what you're saying whatever we have been given use it to further his kingdom and I want everybody to understand that nothing we do is neutral. You are 99% of the time building a kingdom. You're either building the kingdom of light or you're building the kingdom of darkness with your actions and with your thoughts. You know, there is no neutral ground. Like when you watch, you know, a, a movie that glorifies evil, you are participating in the building of an evil kingdom. It is entering into your soul through your eyes. You know, the eyes are the, the um, window to the soul. And so there is no neutral, you know, the songs you listen to, the songs you sing, the things you do at work, what you do your work, how you do your work, whatever it is, you know, you are building a kingdom. And so, you know, whatever you have been given, whatever job you have, whatever skills you have, anointings, talents, you know, submit them to the father and, you know, just understand that they are a gift. You know, it, it is, these things are from him and they should be used for him. And I would also challenge people. Um, I was reading a book one time, uh, Facing the Wall by Don Potter, uh, probably heard of it. Um, <clears throat> Don Potter is one of those really, you know, he, he's been around for a while as far as the music uh, world goes. Oh yeah. And he, he wrote this book called Facing the Wall, specifically for worship leaders. Um, really, really good book. Um, and one of the chapters, he was just talking about how David was a man of many talents. You know, he was a warrior. He was a musician. You know, he was all these things, you know, a leader. But there was only one thing he was anointed to do, and that was to be king. Mm. And interesting, what did the enemy attack him with the most to his detriment? him being a king yeah. um he never took away his ability to be a warrior that's interesting um and so mm -hmm. just um and so he, he he encourages you in the book and i ended up doing it just like really spending some time with the father asking what have you anointed me to do because when you are walking in your anointing then you know what he has given you and how you can give it back to him. And it's just the cycle. Like you give it to him and he gives it back to you. And it's just like, he rewards you for glorifying him. And then you just take it and give it back. It's, it's really beautiful when you can get into that groove with him. That's very good, Daniel. That's very good. Yeah. Thank you. So, it, 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 yeah. so what is, what does being here have to do with that is that this whole concept of there's a piece of you so, you know, the, the whole, we were up on the Harabite, the Temple Mount. Uh, it, it, those that might have read the, uh, the report of the terrorist uh, attack the other day, one of the Israeli security guides, guys was a security agent, police. Sorry, it is late. <coughs> it's almost two o'clock. Uh, he was stabbed in the leg. There was three others 
or two others that got uh, caught in crossfire, various things. They're all okay. Mm -hmm. The uh, the terrorist is uh, enjoying his 72 Virginians now. Oh, wait, maybe it didn't work out that way. Um, yeah, but we were we were like five minutes from there when it happened. We wow. just walked by there. Uh, a couple of minutes later, we'd have probably heard the gunshots and Man. been escorted off the Temple Mount very fast. What is it about the Temple Mount? What, you know, th this is we look that in uh, we look at the scriptures. Uh, there's going to be another temple built. Uh, there's going to be the Millennial Kingdom, a literal Messiah in a literal temple and a literal literal Israel, with the literal Torah, the instructions in the first five books, uh, get, going forth from Jerusalem, Isaiah chapter two. But what is the connection here? Uh, it's not just about what's going to be, but what was. And it is taught that the Temple Mount, where the Holy of Holies sat, is the place that the Almighty took the dirt to form Adam. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, is that true? I don't know. I mean, I'm not, I'm older than you guys, but I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> but he had to take it from somewhere. Okay, so what makes this place? Daniel, you talked about the, the spiritual warfare. This is also the place of spiritual blessing. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's no greater place of, of just connection than right here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you go on the right tour, I mean, you can do the Holy Land tour, and uh, you know, it is, it is like you know, you might as well just go ahead and go to Hawaii or something. But you know, if yeah, you you connect. You want to say something, Daniel? Just to speak to what you're saying, like the the most impactful moment then that my wife and I have probably ever had spiritually was at Shiloh, where the tabernacle stood. Yeah, we, I mean, God absolutely just met us and wrecked us at that spot. And you guys weren't we even married at the time. No, we didn't want to leave. We just, we wanted to stay there. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. something, just to also speak to the the piece of you thing, you know, it's kind of, it's where humanity started. <laughs> and so, mm -hmm. you know, we've talked kind of about the ancestry thing, like when wanting to know where you came from, literally started there. And so that's one, you know, piece of the puzzle to say that, yeah, there's there's really kind of a a, a historical aspect, um, it, it, an ancestry aspect that you connect with when you're there because that's literally where God started, and that's where it that that's where it's going to. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, well, that's another subject. Maybe we can get to in just a moment. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys had this amazing. You know, I mean, Daniel, we we were just at the tree and we were kidding everybody about that. kidding you with you not being there uh about that where you know this is the place at Elon Moray where you proposed to Catesby. Uh, and and you know thankfully she said yes but uh yeah. so you go to the Temple Mount um and, and this is a place of connection. Uh what mm -hmm. what could a for and you, you can uh, you can accomplish a lot of things in life but there is a connection in Israel that connects you to another level of yourself so that you can now achieve what you were designed to at a, at a, at a level here, you know, the higher, the highest level. I'll give you an example. Barry Phillips, good friend of, of all of ours. Uh, he had been, he's a musician, had been struggling for, for all of his life. He had never been able to write a song. He wanted to write a song. <clears throat> and um, start writing music. But he says, I, I could put some stuff down on paper. In the end, it was just, just it didn't make sense. He came to Israel. I brought him to Israel the first time in 2000. Uh, since then, he's written, I think, somewhere around 40 songs. Mm. There, there was a part of him that he needed to, he, he needed to, to attach with here that then allowed him to go back and fulfill something at a greater level than he had been able to in the past. Mm. Yes. That's powerful. I was um, about to say, uh, to, if I could just segue there, but we've been mm -hmm. talking a lot about how when you betray the lane, you find it, but that's kind of even the start of my testimony, even though it wasn't me, my parents went to Israel on the see the holy sites but God had other intentions and other plans and had other people intersect them, divine encounters 
that led them to where now where I'm at now. And if they didn't go to land, experience the things that they saw, then they and me, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. But there's something that happens and there's just that there's an amazing thing. And then when I went back there, I was cleared out my expectations. I'm like, I'm just going to go there and just see what happens. Guess what? God just shows up and he'll show up and just, you'll, you'll expect, oh, I bet you it's going to be this. I bet you it's going to be this. And I bet you, Daniel, you were like, oh yeah, I bet you at Shiloh, that's where I'm going to see God. No, it just shows up. And then you're like, what, yeah. what happened? And I've yeah. had, I had a couple of encounters and I ch- challenge anyone who's thought about it, thinking about it. You already heard it. There's it's simple baby steps and God will carry you the rest of the way to get there. Cause then if he's, if he's inviting you, which if you have it within your heart, that means invitations happening. It's already there. Yeah, it's Just true. make the effort, make the effort and you'll, you'll experience it. And you'll be like, why did I push this off for so long? I just really wanted to include that. Like it was it's so important, so amazing to go mm-hmm. to the land and experience that. And you get to experience that part of yourself that you maybe never knew you had. And the land is very, very good, <laughs> very good land. Mm. So, so see, I've, uh, out of the, people on this call i'm the only one who has not been to the land so what y'all are witnessing has been a, a 30 minute advertisement uh, just for my benefit <laughs> oh yes really. yeah. oh yeah there you go, there you go. <laughs> and, and and ryan we do have uh, we're planning the 2023 connect to israel tour right now uh mm-hmm. so uh, you know go ahead and, and save those uh, those those dollars and be expecting yes. you and brooke to join us Oh, well, it's awesome. interesting. Uh, Leslie and I were talking the other night, and uh, it, it came up about um, why I started playing guitar. Because uh, for those of you who do not know, I've been playing piano since three years old. Uh, guitar didn't enter into that. In fact, whenever I picked it up, I was like, "How do people play this thing? It's like walking on, you know, tightrope wires with your fingers," <laughs> and it just felt very foreign. And and I could never pick it up. And uh, It was actually when we started looking at being able to go to Israel and possibly be able to share some of our music in the land. And I thought, how in the world am I going to lug a keyboard Mm -hmm. around? So I started, I determined there and then that I was going to play guitar so that I would have a portable instrument that I could in some way play just for that purpose of actually being able to engage in that Mm -hmm. in Israel. We know years ago uh, they had the the Russian immigrants coming from uh, from Israel or from Russia, yeah, coming from Israel. <laughs> I need sleep, guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Russian immigrants coming out. And uh, Ryan, do you know how they figured out uh, who was the concert pianist? No, I don't. They did not have their instruments with them. Ah, well, yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth, by the way. Yeah, true. It, those I are a little, that, though, little like, heavy to lug. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. when you want to be the harmonica player. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, or just the singer. You know. What yeah. I mean? yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. What do you specialize in? Opera. You know. <laughs> there you go. Um, I love that though. That's you know that's um. That is that's action. That's action behind faith. Like, you know, that's praying for rain and then walking outside with an umbrella when it's sunny and seventy five. Um, I love that. And I, I, you know, I think that God smiles on those kind of things. When we come into communion with him, we receive these like desires and visions and we, we see that it's a good thing. It's a good thing for us to, you know, pursue that. And then we start acting with ways like that. Like that's, I love that. It's amazing. And Ryan, I also, Oh, go Go ahead. 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 I was going to, I was going to segue to a different thing. Um, Ryan, you know, we're talking about what you have been given and, you know, I know kind of how it is when you, you want to write a song, you know, you want to, to give back to the father, you know, what he's given you. So, Mm -hmm. you know, what, can you just walk through like what it's like for you when you're writing a song, you know, just because you have, you have the gift, you want to pour it out. So what's, what's the process like for you? What, what do you feel when you're doing that? That's, that's actually a very interesting question. Um, There's, I'll start by saying this. In music, there's I've seen there's two schools of thought, and I'm not talking in a, in a spiritual sense here. I will get to that in just a second. But there's there seems to be two schools of thought. Uh, on one side, and actually on this side that I'm going to mention, Paul Simon was an advocate of this. 
he said that uh, you don't just wait for like the stars to align, right? Or a song to just drop down from nowhere. You go in and be very intentional in your writing, right? And the other side is that a song will find you. And that's more of the camp that I am residing in, I would say. Because um, most of the time, I've said this before, I have never been like, today from two to three o'clock, I will write a song, hmm. right? Um, most yep. of the time, I'll be doing something even completely different than sitting there with a guitar or a piano or what have you. I may be driving the car or mowing the lawn or, you know, who knows, sitting at my desk working. Mm-hmm. And I can attest to this. I've seen this before and I was go, okay, move on. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, Dave has learned when, uh, when he walks by and he sees me like furiously writing in a notepad to just like, <laughs> you know, close the, the doors door. and everybody leave him alone. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, because sometimes it's like you tap into this wellspring of, uh, mm. I don't know what to, to write it or what to call it. Um, uh, an outward expression of, uh, an inward. Mm-hmm being or longing whatever it might be Mm -hmm. Uh, and then it it comes forth and and i'll say for the songwriters out there actually i never um i never waste a a lyric and what i mean by that is if something comes to your mind during the day even if it's just two or three lines write it down and keep it Mm -hmm. because there has been many songs that i've come i've written uh that i'll get it started and realize oh this is the topic that we're going to be talking about this is apparently what the lord's wanted me to write about but he'd given me five six seven different pieces that i had taken and then i just connected those and then i had all the verses all the the choruses and everything yeah um yeah don't don't throw that away yeah you see you do in with with music what i do in in messages Mm -hmm. okay interesting same thing yeah uh, let me let me throw something at you here that uh, it's it's very important to go to the right school. Okay, now not just the right school physically. I'm not talking about that specific, but the right school of thought. It's important to find your right teachers. It's important to find the right people in your life. Uh, yes. Tomorrow or today for me. We will be going down to a place I've never been before. It's uh, the place of Gilgal. Now, this is, I've been by there numerous times. This is on the Jordan River. Uh, we read about Gilgal many times. Uh, you can, people can go and, and Google that or go to Blue Letter Bible, type in Gilgal. Fascinating place. Uh, this was the, the, where the tabernacle came before it went to Shiloh or Shiloh and stayed there for 369 years. Uh, this is the place the Hebrews came across the Jordan River. This is the place of uh, the anointing of King Saul. And this is also the place that we read the story of the uh, of Elijah and Elisha. Mm. Mm. And at the end of Elijah's life, when he is in the the whole story of Elijah and Elisha is fascinating to me. I've got, I've done so much teaching on this. Um, It says that Elisha had connected himself. He had, he had, he was cleaving to Elijah um, and following him around. He says, wherever you go, I go. To the point that Elijah, you know, in that, those last, that last event of his life, he said, you stay here. He says, no, 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 my father. I'm going with you. Wherever you go, I'm, I'm not taking my eyes off of you. See, we'll be given opportunities in life to, well, you know, you wait at the hotel. I'm going to go do something. Um, I don't know how many encounters in the land that I've had that the rest of the group wasn't with me. The greatest mm. encounter that I've ever had in this land that connected me with the people of this land in, in the way that it has um, was the last night we were in Israel and I had an opportunity to go somewhere and uh, the vast majority of the group stayed behind to pack and to rest 
And this was your this first trip, right? This is my first trip. This is 24 years ago. And I said, I'm in Israel. I ain't missing nothing. I'm not missing anything. And it was that night that an encounter would happen that would define my life. Uh, Elijah and Elisha, there, it says that, that there was the school of the prophets. But you know what the school of the prophets were doing? They were watching the man who would become the prophet. They were learning at the wrong school. So make sure that you're not going somewhere just because of the sign on the door. Mm, Make sure that the person that you're following, the first person you've attached themselves to is, is truly walking in anointing. You know what you call it? And this is, this is a broad statement, but for, but for, uh, this is true. And I think that most, a lot of teachers would, uh, uh, would agree with this, that, uh, you know, business, I've, I've had people that gone and got a whole degree in business and never could succeed. Why? Because they studied under somebody that couldn't succeed in business. Mm-hmm. Find successful people. Somebody mentioned right. uh, earlier, you know, about uh, where you're going to be going. I can tell you where you're going. It's easy. It's easy to tell you where you're going to be at in five years. It is, let me rephrase it into modern technology. It used to be the books you read. Now it's the YouTubes you watch, the, 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 the social media you're a part of, the people you hang out with. If you will look at the, the sum total of who you hang out with and the media that you are a part of, that's where you're going to be in five years. Yeah. You want to hang out with, you want to be broke in life? Hang out with five broke people and ask right. them how right. to be successful. That's yeah. right. Yeah, they say you're the sum of the five people that you spend yeah. the most time with. Yeah. So mm-hmm. if you're hanging out with five idiots, guess what? That's right. Uh, it's officially 215. I can say whatever I want. Hey, I say it like it is. <laughs> no, no sugar coding here. So, I was so like, where's that fifth person here? To, to <laughs> add on to that, then as well, when it comes to songwriting, if you want to write songs for the father, hang out with the father. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then yeah. those songs will find that's you. That's good. That's good. Hey, Ryan, you said that twice. Okay. Will they find you? Or were they there already waiting for you to find them? I think yes. Yes, it's, it's both. Um, the famous sculptor Michelangelo said uh, of carving an angel out of a rock, they said, how do you know what part is, uh, you know, where to carve? And he says, well, I only take away the parts that are not, that don't look like an angel, basically. He says, the angel's already in the rock. I'm just taking away the parts that aren't the angel. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Now, with that, let me let me go. So we were sitting, uh, was it here? No, I was in uh, I was in Yerushalayim the other night. And we were, it was kind of our after uh, tour uh, meeting. And we had somebody in the room that was talking about deja vu. Now, if, has anybody ever done a deja vu? Many times. Yeah, you're, you're like, wait, 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 wait a minute, I've been here before. And that's one of the craziest things. Now, my wife, Kathy, is sitting in the room. And she told me later, she says, I, I said, I had no idea what I was saying when I was saying it. She said, yeah, I can see that. I can see it in your face that I'm saying something that's like, what am I talking about? But it was just there. And so I've got a concept. I got a thought that we've got about 10 minutes left or so. Um, All right, let's what, hear it. Okay. What is deja vu? Hmm. So if the father declared the end out of the beginning, which is what the scripture says. And the beginning of scripture is Revelation chapter 21, not Mm -hmm. Genesis chapter 1. So if he began in in Revelation chapter 21 with a dream, that there would be a people, it would be his, he would be theirs, and then he backed up and began, then all that has happened is a part of that dream. Okay, David's got where I'm going. So if, if in his mind, it says, whom the Father did foreknow, this is Romans chapter 29, shoot, chapter, 20, chapter 8, verse 29, 
whom he did foreknow, he did predestine to be conformed in the image of his son, Yeshua the Messiah. Is our life already planned out? In his mind, has he already seen life? It, time? We go in time from point A to point B. We only have one way to go. We can't go backwards. We can study backwards. We can mm -hmm. think about future, but we only got, we're locked into this thing. <clears throat> but what That's if right. time is not a, a straight line? Mm -hmm. What if time is like a plane and he can move anywhere on that plane that he wants? Or what if it's like a sphere and time, and he can move anywhere in that so he literally can see the end out of the beginning and deja vu moments or when you come in contact, which is already in his mind. Mm -hmm. I, I definitely don't think to a whole off. nother level. Yes. <laughs> no. Um, right. You know, as, as Ryan, you were talking and dad, you were talking. Um, the reason like, you know, we talked, you were, we were talking about the song and like how, you know, you're, it's coming to you, but it's already there. Mm -hmm. And those things are essentially, it comes down to the connection with the father. Like we are, physical bodied people that have an eternal being inside of us and when we are connected with the father like our spiritual being is connected with the one who is eternal and who is you know can do whatever he wants you know who that's why we can create because we are connected to the creator and so you know i i don't think you're far off at all it's it's, it's our connection with him that he just, it's just a conduit, you know, we're connected to the one who knows everything and who desires to move through us and desires to be with us. And when we have that connection to him, like we're just walking alongside of him, then yes, the song comes to you, but it's, it's essentially like there beside you in him. And he's just like, here you go. This is the right time for this. And what you said in that moment, dad, it's like, here you go. This is the right time for this for you. Let me, let me take a word that you're you're using the word connection. Okay, let's let me take a different generation word. Tuned in. Okay, today we connect. Everything's about this phone. Everything's about the computer. It's connect. You you plug the wires in. You you get on the internet. You know I'm sitting here in uh, in the Sea of Galilee in Tiberius. When when it wasn't but uh, less than 20 years ago, I'd be sitting in the same place, hotel right next door, and I'd have to do a dial-up connection to Tel Aviv from here and go, ee, you know, that, that crazy thing, all that stuff. Now I just boom, and I'm on like 179 upload megabytes up and down right now. Um, but Coming we used good. to back, you know, <laughs> we had AM radio, AM FM radio, and I had to tune it in. And it'd be kind of squeaky. Then and then, then we had the next stage was was on the radios was a fine tune. Mm. So you tune in to their station, and and you you see it, you, you kind of hear it coming and going a little bit. You're right on the side, a little staticky, and then you take that fine tune dial and you tune that one in and get it right there in the place. So what we're talking about is tuning into his frequency. Mm -hmm. That's now, right, yeah. if you you got that dial and you're all over the place, and you're like over in disco, you ain't hearing his voice there, baby. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, <laughs> you're you're over so, into all this other stuff. You're not hearing his voice. You're hearing noise. You're hearing junk. You're hearing stuff that's that's maybe maybe speaking to your emotions and your 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 uh, fleshly nature. But then you got to tune out of that. You got to mm -hmm. tune out of that and then tune into his voice. And then you, you, you fine tune. And guess what? Did you find the song or did the song find you? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's what I think I wanted to, I wanted to jump on that whole idea that we've, we've had similar experiences uh, as we've traveled and stuff. And that conversation comes up deja vu. And you mentioned about, oh, now I'm going to be thinking about this rest of the night. I think, can't tell you how many times I've sat on in the bed just thinking about that concept, really, because you, I think everyone's experienced that. And I, we've kind of come up to the same conclusion that you brought up. I believe there is something about that. Now, again, there's so many interpretations. Let's set all that aside. I, whenever I get to experience it, it's like, 
maybe that I just got just lined up, but just found that like, mm-hmm. oh, okay, everything's good. Ooh, interesting. But you, that, that concept you're talking about instead of connection, but tune in, you kind of went off into what I was really wanting to go into is, do you leave it on that white noise when you're tuning in? Do you leave it on the white noise and go, oh yeah, that's fine. That's exactly where I want it to be. Good. That's what I want to hear. Or you go, that's that's wrong. Let me keep let me keep tuning it. Let me keep the, turning that dial. And I think that's what we get when, in the busyness. And this also can be a lot of the reason why we put off that trip we've always wanted to go to or put off of what God's been telling us. We'll say, yeah. you know what? I don't have to be accountable to what's being brought over in this white noise area because there's nothing here. Let me just keep it there. I'm not saying that I'm accusing anybody. I've been that. I've been there before. And I'll just yeah. keep it on the white noise so I could just yeah. do what I think I should do instead of hearing that voice of accountability and going, oh, let me check that. I got to do that. So that was, that's a fantastic point, that that tuning in thing. I think that's really great. There you go. Closing thoughts, Ryan? Closing thoughts. A uh, couple things, actually, speaking of this, tuning in. Uh, there's a great band for anybody that has not heard them. Uh, I think you actually had mentioned them to me at one point, Daniel. Water Texas deep. Road Band. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't actually no. know them. <laughs> okay, so uh, they have a song called "Stranger in This Land," and to your point, Dave and Michael, uh, I spent too much time today. It says on things that don't mean much. The world around me groans under its tyranny of touch. Every wasted thought and every battle left unfought, all are testimony of my need of you. Mm. Yeah. really powerful lyrics i thought there yeah uh and then one final thing back to our conversation on john newton's sermon and on songwriting sometimes you'll be given lyrics or you'll be given a melody and you don't know what to do with it or you don't know how it's going to uh, affect somebody or you'll play it and it doesn't seem to have much effect um upon singing for the first time amazing grace and by the way, the, the music that was written to Amazing Grace actually wasn't written to it as we know it until around 1820. Uh, so for a good 50 years, roughly 50 years, uh, it went by a different melody. And we don't know what that melody is today. <laughs> mm. um, but he came home, John Newton, that is, and he wrote in his diary just hours after this sermon. I preached this forenoon from First Chronicles. Hope I was enabled to speak with some liberty but I found my own heart sadly unaffected. And sometimes things will happen and they're not for you or not for that time. Mm, But if they are from the father and you know, they're from the father and you walk in that obedience, they may just change Mm. the world. Yeah. Absolutely. That's my final talk. Hey, Daniel. Good Israel. Everybody. (laughs) Everybody. Everybody. There you go. That's all I got. Oh, man. All that's right. why I think I might want to just have that thing, that that whole idea of walking obedience. I think that's an extremely good point of this new season, walking obedience. Uh, if you haven't been, I think uh, Mike has said this many times, and I try to adopt it whenever I get to talk to other people about Israel. I just recently talked to someone about it. Guess what? Here's the invitation. <laughs> so if yeah, you've never heard you anyone say to go to Israel, here it is. It's right now. It's right here before your ears. Uh, walk in obedience. T- ask the Father for help in it, and you just might find out that in a surprising amount of time, you're in the yep. land and you get yep. to encounter something. And what Mike was talking about, uh, the same thing I've heard about people with encounters. Go there expecting something, like expecting God to do something, but with no expectation, because sometimes you'll just be walking down the road yep. and there's that divine appointment. So that's all, that's all I'll leave you with. And I hope that some of y'all are listening and you'll hear because the land is so good. It's so very, very good. It's amazing. It is amazing. I'll be doing a report when I get back. I'm actually doing some uh, recordings with people that are here to give their reports of their time in Israel. Um, and, and guys, you know, I mean, I, of course, it's uh, very easy for me to give a commercial. Our Connect Israel tour is, uh, it's not just for old people. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's, it is multi-generational and, uh, you know, we speak across the board. Uh, we have, uh, we have one young lady who, who is, uh, I think she's, uh, is she eight or nine, Daniel? Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, she's been having a great time. 
We have people that are in their 70s uh, all across the board. So this is, you know, this is really this this whole concept that we're trying to do on this program is break down those. Well, I need to hang out with people my age. Uh, that, that doesn't always work real good. So mm -hmm. we've got the tour. You can, people can go to connectisrael.com, I think it is. And uh, I don't have the 2023 information up. We're actually revamping the Connect tour right now. Uh, we're, we're getting ready to, we're on kind of like Connect two, uh, 1.5 right now. We're going to be doing 2.0 with some new things. But uh, you know, it's about connecting with the land and then taking your expectations and setting them to the side. Yeah. Uh, you know, somebody mentioned this earlier, I'll close with this, that uh, sometimes our expectations in life get in the way of the Father's expectations for us. Yep. Which would you rather have? Mm -hmm. Because right. he has a plan for you. Plans for good and not for evil to give mm -hmm. you life and a purpose. So live life on purpose. See you guys next week. Amen. See we'll see you. God of the universe, maker of the stars.